There I am, facing off with the guy in the Confederate hat. At this moment, I've walked pretty far down a path that has made some people curious, some people confused, and some people very, very angry. I burned a Confederate flag. I burned a Confederate flag, or more precisely, the battle flag of the Army of Northern Virginia, because the symbol of the lies told create a racist society that relied on terror and punished anyone who would dare oppose white supremacy. Now, when I did this, people were shocked. After all, I work at Rollins College. I'm well-spoken, bookish, and I seem very nice. I'm the kind of black person that does not make white people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> However, putting aside white comfort, I am black and racist and racism is a part of my life. I was born in a small town in Alabama called Sylacauga. When the KKK marched down Main Street, even though they seemed really far away, as I ran out the play, my mom stopped me and said, stay where I can see you. What I didn't understand then, but know all too well now, is being black in the United States comes with certain dangers. When I ask myself, what's the worst thing that could happen? The answer is, nice or not, bookish or not, I could be shot and killed. Now, burning the Confederate flag traces back to my time as a teenager, too. I grew up in Jacksonville. And the housing project that I lived in there made me a potential criminal by default. My blackness opened me up to a very particular set of circumstances. Stopped by the police, check. Looked at suspiciously when entering a store, check. Thought to be stupid, check. When the story hit the news, the, the flag burning became about me upsetting people. But as I pointed out, I was trying to push, back that, push past that heritage not hate slogan and talk about the regressive nature of the flag. My friends asked me, why would you do such a thing? And I pointed out, I was in a better position than both to do it. I'm a history professor. In countless interviews, I talked about the history of the flag, about the regressive and repressive regime that was attached to it, about the violence that oppressed black and white people for decades. Well, that's true. But the story we hear in public, the popular Southern history is very different. The flag and the countless memorials, the dead Southern soldiers, Southern soldiers that dot the landscape tell a different story. One where the Civil War is not about slavery, where the South fought only for honor, where black people were happy members of the family. Of course, that story also includes the black people and Yankees ravaged the South after the Civil War. The KKK are romantic heroes in that story. They ride out and they help white Southerners by burning, beating, and shooting people. And that's the way white supremacy equals justice. Now, I burned the Confederate flag because I thought it was important to point out the kind of twisted world that story nurtures. After all, I attended Jeb Stewart, that guy who was Confederate Cavalry General Middle School, and I would have went to Nathan Bedford Forrest, the guy who started the KKK High School, if I hadn't have moved. But, of course, whatever I was hoping to do, once the story became public, I got to see the anger that always happens when you challenge the popular notions of the South. In and out of the state, people promised to come to the event with their guns and shoot me. Other people called my office and warned me. Um, some people started a petition to have me fired. Other people wrote me long letters talking about their grandfathers and their families, and their proud history. And I wanted to ask them, what about my family? We got a history in the South too. I can tell you stories about the indignities my grandmother faced. Or I can tell you the things about my uncles and my fathers and how they were hurt. But my story and their story doesn't necessarily fit so neatly into the story of the South that we like to tell. Now, to be fair, it's true. We like to talk about the food that comes from black culture. Kinda. We like to talk about the music inspired by the black experience, sorta. But it gets more complicated when we talk about all the wealth generated by black labor, all the fear that's life of black voices, or all the pain associated with the black experience. In this public version we like to tell, we tend to ignore how black people are abused for trying to do well, or how black property is destroyed for being too nice, 
or the terror that is visited on anyone who might object because that's heritage. Now, black people are told to let it go. Black people are told it's all in the past. Black people are told that things are different now. All the while, they get to see symbols everywhere that are laden with violence, blood, pain, and death. Coming together, saying our words, doing what we want to do. We're trying to interrupt this story. We're trying to recast the history, to talk about how it still feeds stereotypes that make it easy to beat, shoot, and kill men, women, and children just as long as they're black. In the ceremony, we scattered the ashes of the flag. We said words about its meaning. We played songs, sort of burying it. There was a hope for the future built on the hard work of reconciling with the past and the things that we did. Of course, the killings in Charleston changed the timor of what we did. And I will always be troubled that people congratulated me after those killings. When people ask me, why did I burn the Confederate flag? The answer is, I burned it so we could talk about its meaning. And I still believe that that conversation could make us better. Thank you.